let me say to the people of Grand Cape Makane, Wakune. Uh, is a very kamama. Salam alaikum. All right. Barika. First, I came to introduce myself to the people of Cape Man. Everybody in Liberia has heard my name, but and they know me to be a poor man's lawyer. They know me to be a human rights advocate. They know that I was president of the Bar Association, but as a politician, I'm new. And so I came to show myself for the people of Cape Man to see me in person and know me. And they say seeing is believing. Besides that, I came to appeal to the people of Cape Man County I've done, uh, as I've done in more than 230 towns across five counties in Liberia to encourage them to vote. I came to appeal to them to vote. Many people are saying that they will not vote because they have been voting in this country since 2005 and they have seen no result. So I'm telling the board in Cape Man that I'm here to show, to give you reasons why you should register to vote. I have a 10 point agenda for changing Liberia's story to a better story. I'm an agent of change and my own past record can show that. So I came to bring me a message of hope that if they vote, Liberia will be a better place. I want to be the project manager to change Liberia's story to a, to a better story. And there are four major things on the agenda for a better Liberia that I want to appeal to the people of Cape Man to consider and change their position. Everywhere I've gone since yesterday up to today in Cape Man, when they hear these four major items on the agenda for change, they can be happy. At the end, they can say, but then I will register, register the vote. Number one is in the health area. Pregnant women die in this country a lot. Children under five die a lot. And old people die a lot. So I've been telling them that when I become president, pregnant women, children under the age of five, Liberian men and women who are 65 years old and above will go to all the government hospitals and clinics free of charge. I have told them that their children will go to school free of charge from kindergarten to 12th grade. I've told them that the children who are out of high school, some of them are high school dropout, and the only thing they're doing now is to ride motorbikes, will have a different situation because I will give them training. I will open free uh, trade schools in all of the 15 countries for young Liberian boys and girls to learn mechanic work, carpentry work, tailoring work, uh, electricity work, all of the different trades so they can live by it. They can live in their own villages. You can be in Sinje and be a rich. The story of Liberia, for those who have never been to school, can read and write. In two years, when I'm president, I will make government to make everybody in Liberia read and write. By giving stipend to junior high students, high school students, college students, in order for them to to teach people in their communities to learn how to read and write. They will be employed full time to go to villages where there are no schools to teach everybody in Liberia how to read and write. If you live in the world today, you can't read and write, then you are living, you are not properly living in the world because you're not getting all the information. That's how I want to change the story in the health area and in the educational area. Let me go a little bit to the health area. Most people will say about Councillor Gonglo, 
-hmm. Government clinic and hospital got nothing. No medicine that you go there to get prescribed for you to go to drugs to. I have told them that when I become president, government clinic and hospitals will be much better than private clinic and hospital. Why? Because as president, I will make a pay surprise visits to clinic and hospitals. I come and say I came for medical checkup. When they say, Mr. President, they play not good, you can get, we can check you up. I will dismiss the head of that clinic or hospital and send that person for investigation and prosecution to account for what has happened to the drugs and the equipment that government put in the hospital and clinics. And I strongly believe that when I do that to about 10 hospitals and clinics and their heads are in jail accounting for the corruption in the, in, the, in the health sector, every other administrator of a clinic or hospital will be careful not to steal anything from the clinic or hospital. Because I strongly believe that if a clinic or hospital is not good for the president of Liberia, then it's not good for any citizen. Because governance is not for the president and those who serve in government. It is for those who are served. Government is a place to serve, not to steal. It's all on my stickers. The next thing I want is for us to, I want to change Liberia's story when it comes to food security. There's so much food insecurity here. What do I mean by that? The rice that we eat, that we love so much, uh, are not, you know, we don't produce rice here. Rice is not produced in Liberia. Rice is imported. So I want to change that story. Because we import rice, the price of rice is always going up. And even sometimes you can't find it here. But if we start growing enough rice here, rice will always be here and the price will be low. But cut license and holes cannot produce enough rice for us. In India, in Nigeria, in America, other places, they're not using cut license and holes anymore. They're using machines. We bring the same ideas here. Our Liberian soil is so rich that you can plant rice even four times in the same place. You see, you get good yield. You get good yields from your rice without even using fertilizer. So government under my administration will buy machines, caterpillar, tractors, combine harvesters, all the machines we need to make rice farm and distribute and give it to the farmers in the 15 counties through the farmers cooperatives as a credit that the farmers will pay in 15 years by giving back of rice to government every year. I believe that when we have machines in the 15 counties, they'll be able to make big, big farm, rice farm, just like Sam Dabi is. Just like how you have a uh, Sherman oil palm plantation. Every year, when we have big, big farm like that in Cape Man here, Cape Man will never go without rice. People will never get hungry price of rice will be low. The same thing will happen all over the country. We have BB Rice Farm and Firestone, like Cocoa Park, the like Cavala Rubber Company in uh, Maryland. But I will not stop there. The, the army that we have, we pay them every month. Since 1908, we've been paying the army, but they have not fought any war. But I have war for the army to fight. I will declare war against hunger, relying on the army, and we order the chief of staff to go to war against hunger. Instead of buying a gun that can kill human beings, I will buy rice producing machines and give it to the army and say, you are here by order to produce not less than 100 acres of rice in each of the 15 counties. That means they can produce 200 acres, 300 acres, 500 acres even. That rice will be used to feed the army and to feed the nation. So when the army is producing rice and the farmers are producing rice, all of them using machines, certainly Liberia's story will change. We'll not go without rice. Hunger will not be here again. Hunger will be a stranger here. Price of rice will be low. In fact, I, I see a situation where in the future when we're doing this, Liberia will now export rice Instead of using over $200 million every year to buy rice from India and other countries, 
we will not be selling rice and making four to five hundred million dollars a year that will help to develop our country. That will change Liberia's story. The last thing I want to do on the four key items of my agenda is road maintenance and road construction. On our Tubman, Tubman and Do, every country used to have public wear yards with yellow machines. Time like that during the dry season, the yellow machines are all on the roads. They used to be on the roads, maintaining the roads, clearing the roads so that even when rainy season comes, the roads will not cut up. These days, it's hard for cars to come from Buffalo to Monrovia during the rainy season. It's hard for cars to come from Vanjama to Banga during the rainy season. From southeastern Liberia to Ganta. That never used to happen in the past. So when I become president, I will change Liberia's story there, where cars will move freely. If cars don't move freely, the roads are not good. Even government pull ambulance and every cleaning will be for nothing because the ambulance will be uh, moving, just like human being walking. It means that when you put sick people in those ambulances, those people will die before reaching the hospital and clinic they are supposed to go to. I saw one when I was going from, from, from Zozo to Vangerman the other day. One ambulance was passing, I could even run past it. So I said to myself, but this is not an ambulance because it a pregnant woman in that car or it a sick person before they reach the hospital will be dead because the road is so bad that the ambulance is moving slower than human beings running. So these are the mean things that I want to tell the Cape Martinians tonight that among all of us who are, will be competing for the presidency of Liberia, I have a message that no other president, presidential candidate in the history of Liberia has brought to the Liberian people. This message I'm giving you tonight, no senatorial candidate, no representative candidate are giving that message to you. But these things I'm saying, that money we need to do it. And people will ask, Councilor Gongo, where you get all that money from? We have to stop corruption in this country. That's why I have this broom in my hand all the time. The broom is a symbol to sweep corruption from Liberia. But I can't do it alone because if you take one string of the broom, it's easy to break it. Together, it's hard to break it. So I'm calling upon the Liberian people that I will lead them in the fight against corruption. But everybody can say they will fight corruption. They can't show how they'll do it. Me, I have 12 count prescription on how to fight corruption, but I'll name a few. First, I think I will honor my administration. The president will declare an asset and will be published on the internet. The president's salary and benefit will be on the internet. I will also publish on the internet the salary and benefit and the, the asset value of the chief justice, the justices, the judges, the speaker, the president, pro tem, all the lawmakers, all the civil servants, the ministers, everybody's salary will be on the internet. So they can, people can even see the difference between the civil servant salary and the big shot salary. Then when the salaries are all known, when as president, I start building 10 story building in my own time, Glaze of y'all will know I'm not even my value, it will show that my value is not even 100,000. So where I'm coming from to build 100, $500,000 house or $1 million house. Everybody will say that the president, it will be demonstrating or in the street, the president has to step down because he's stealing. So when I'm president, when you, you minister, you start billing, story billing, we'll check on it. I know you'll be, you'll be stealing. So I ask you one or two questions where you got that money from, you can't answer, I will dismiss you. And send you over to the Liberian Anti-Corruption Commission for proper investigation prosecution and, and detention. When you are found guilty, you will go to jail and the money that you stole the balance will take it from you. The houses that you are building, the cars you bought will take them from you. And I strongly believe and everywhere I ask that question in Cape my here today and yesterday. I say when five ministers are in jail, all their money taken from them, all their property taken from them and the family members suffering, you think any more minister want to stay again? All of them can answer no. And I believe if I ask you this question on the radio tonight, wherever you are sitting, you will say no. Every minister will be a friend not to stay. Then I ask the other question. You think anybody who want to stay will want government job again? They can answer no. And I believe if I ask you the question in your home tonight, you will say no. 
Then that is the way now we sue corruption and burn it. As lawyer and president at that time, I will sponsor one law in the law making on, that anybody who steal government money and go to jail, when they free them, when they come from jail, they finish serving their prison sentence, they must never work for government again until they die. That's the way we stop corruption in this country. We we'll stop corruption by having no money to maintain our, to, to make our hospitals better, to make our schools better. There will be no volunteer teacher under my administration. Government will pay all the teachers. Government will pay all the teachers. We'll have money to buy enough caterpillar to maintain our roads, to build more farm to market roads. That clearly is the message that I have for the Kim Martinez. I also say, you see my picture everywhere. On my picture, I got my picture there with, with the country cloth. The, the, like, my, the country cloth I'm wearing, the red, white, and blue, the librarian flare color. Then I got a broom there. The broom is meant to clean government. So that the picture I'll have. So I came to show myself to the Kim Martinian and to give them reason why to vote. And I'm telling you tonight, everybody who is listening to this radio and under the sound of my voice, I'm appealing to you to register to vote because your change agent is here. Who wants to be a project manager to change Liberia's story for the better? And it is possible. That is my message to the Kim Martinez tonight. And that is why I am here to appeal to them to change their mind to say, I will not register again to vote. Let them register and challenge and vote for me so that I can do these things I'm saying I will do for the Liberian people. That is my message. And I, if anybody has question tonight, I, will, I hope they can ask that question. If they have any comment, if the message is good, uh, let them tell me. I learned one via uh, expression here. I bebe na, and I'm sure if they are listening tonight, they will tell me, Ah, so that is it, Roger. That's my message uh, to the people of Cape Town, to the people of Liberia who are living in Cape Town tonight. That there is a possibility of having a better Liberia, a Liberia that will be a sweet country for all Liberians. We can always say sweet land of liberty, but today is a better land of liberty for majority of the people, a sweet land of liberty for the few people who are still in government. You know the corruption thing I'm talking the other thing. If government is no more a place to be corrupt, to steal money, then our lives will be free. There will not be a, a ritualistic killing anymore. Because the reason why people are doing ritualistic killing, that got hard men business all over the country, post care to go on the farm, is when people become minister they steal, they become representative they steal, they become senator they steal, they become president they steal. They become managing director of the state. But it will stop corruption, no way to steal again. Then nobody will go to uh, which data to say, for the which data to say, bring me him on being high, bring me him on being liver, bring me him on being kidney, bring me him on being blood, so you can be managing director, so you can be elected representative, you can be elected senator, you can be, become minister, then we'll all be free. So we'll stop corruption, we'll have enough money to develop our country, and also our lives will be safe. Nobody will trouble us. Our doors will be open and nobody will come kill us to get big government jobs. That is my short story to the people of Cape Town. Thank you very much. You know, leadership is everything. 
I watched Al Jazeera one time and they asked the Prime Minister of UAE, how come they send a desert land that used to be the home of camels and donkeys? And there were no car here that only camels and donkeys used to ride has become the first, has become so developed and has become the first choice of tourists. He said one word. He said everything is leadership. It's leadership that turned this thing around. And he said by leadership, I mean good leadership. Everything begins with a leader. I have served in government, but I've not been the leader of the country. That is why I resigned, because the president and said I was not prepared to fight corruption, and I didn't want to be part of it. So I resigned. I was at Justice Ministry. I was Solicitor General. I was the first lawyer in Liberia to prosecute a former head of state. And one time, I even had the head of state go to jail because he violated the law that they led Judy Bryan. And I prosecuted so many people. But let me tell you something. You have to have the political will. And you yourself, who is fighting corruption, must be clean. Because if you are corrupt, you cannot fight corruption with any degree of, of integrity, with any degree of credibility, because they're all corrupt will say, look at you. You yourself, you're corrupt. So that is why I left the corrupt government of President Salib. I resigned your first term. Even before she reached her sixth year, I resigned in her fifth year as Minister of Labor. Minister job, a good job. The things I had to do there, because I care for librarian people, I had to I do, I did it. When I was going through confirmation, I said, what do you want to do at labor? I said, I want to improve the labor law, and I want to make sure that librarian jobs are protected. I want to enforce the librarianization policy. So I got there. I found out that there were plenty of foreigners working here because the work permit fee was low, it was 400 US dollars. I convinced the president because the president had to approve everything you do as minister. I increased it from $400 to $1,000. Immediately, some, foreign, some company that were employing 50 uh, foreigners reduced the foreigners to 20 and employed more Liberians. But still, some companies still wanted to employ more foreigners. I said, but you want to employ a foreigner, you pay $1,000. That year, for the first time, Ministry of Labor used to make not more than $500,000 a year. That year, the Ministry of Labor made $6 million. And the Ministry of Labor became an economic ministry under my administration. That is an achievement I can boast of. I issued regulation number 17. That regulation I made Ministry of Labor to be an economic ministry to the extent that while I was still there, they brought banking window in our place. So there's still a bank at Ministry of Labor. The bank came there because of my policy of liberalization. It is still there today, regulation number 17 is still being used by the current Minister of Labor. It was under my administration that the Decent Work Act was completed. I wrote a letter submitting it to President Salih. It is the Decent Work Act that is being used as a new labor law today. There are too many good things in there for, to protect workers and employers. So these were my achievements. But I was not president. I could just do what I could do. When it came to fighting corruption, she was not prepared. So I resigned from government. And there were many people that appealed to me, people she sent and all of that, and I didn't go back. My words are my words. When I say something, I do it. And those who know me know that. Everywhere I go, they give that testimony. Today, in St. J, in different places, even yesterday, my testimonies were being made, were being given about the things I do. I don't remember these things because they are the right thing to do. They should be normal, so I don't remember them. But I've tried my only asset. I'm a poor man. I don't have money. Nobody, I tell people in Cayman, nobody should ask me to pay market billing for them or to pay Palabra or to, 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 pay, uh, 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 to put a hand pump or to build public toilet. I don't have that money. I'm here as a messenger. The people who transform the world, who bring good messages, are never rich. Muhammad was not a rich man. You can read the Quran from the beginning to the end. It will never tell you that Muhammad was a millionaire or billionaire. Same thing with Jesus Christ. In fact, you were born where horses can sleep, you call it a stable. 
So that people from the humble background that God can use to transform the world. So I'm here. I strongly believe that I can make Liberia a sweet land of liberty for all Liberians by transforming their life, using the office of the presidency to make sure that their lives become better, not like today. Okay, the difference between me and most president of Liberia is that I'm a trained lawyer, and I will be the first trained lawyer in Liberian history to be uh, president of the country. I even teach law at the only law school in Liberia, and I've been president of all the lawyers in Liberia, so I know how to do it. Instead of using NSA to find out whether somebody want my job or somebody talking bad thing about me, I will, the money that government pays NSA, I will use it to check on the people, they will be my eye. NSA agents will be working in the clinics and hospitals and everywhere and will get intelligence on what's happening there. You are not a good president if you are not on top of information. I can say that for a fact because I worked with one president before. I was executive assistant in Amos Sawyer, so I know how the, the office of the presidency works. And I always tell people, you know, any job you do, you must be an apprentice. If you are a mechanic boy, then you learn to be mechanic. I work in the office of the president before, so I know how to become a good president because I will learn from the mistakes that were made then. Information to the president is available. If you want all the information you can get to, to do well in your government, you can do it. And you talk about separation of powers. Let me tell you, the president, presidential power is strong here in America, everywhere. Who pays the, the people working in the other two branches of the government? It's the president. The president uh, drafts a budget, he sends it to the legislature for approval, when they approve, he is the one that can execute the law, the budget law, by paying the other two uh, agencies, of, I mean, uh, branches of government. And he has a right to monitor how the people's money is spent in the other two branches of the government. So as president, you have, a, you have authority to arrest a senator who steals government money or a representative who steals government money. You have authority to, 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 to bring a judge to book by impeaching the judge, sending a bill of impeachment to impeach the judge and have that person prosecuted. And the Constitution says nobody is a, is a is immune except the president. Nobody is immune for prosecution for felony and for breach of peace. Nobody is is exempt for prosecution for for treason. You know, so as president, this will be a different president who will make sure that everybody in this country abides by the law. And I will make sure that the law is rigorously enforced and nobody will be above the law. For anybody to be above the law will be promoting impunity, and impunity is a threat to peace. So I will not promote impunity. You can be my son. If you violate the law, the law will go against you. You think you are my brother or sister or my son, and you want to engage in some funny business to get a contract from government agency and not perform on the contract, 
or, or bribe to get contract, or do whatever, use ever whatever influence to get a contract. When the law goes against you, you will be prosecuted in the interest of Liberian people. That's the one thing I took from President Trump. The fact that he signed the death warrant of William Trump. Oh my God. He said, I watch it on TV. He said, Bill, you are my family member. You know I love you so much. You are named after me. You are William. And your last name is Tom. I could actually set you free. I could pardon you. But I took oath to obey, defend, and execute the laws, the Constitution, laws of the Republic of Liberia. One of the laws says that when somebody kills in this country and the court says that you are guilty, you should be executed. So I'm going to sign the death warrant. He made it a matter of television. He prayed for William Talbot. He said, I'll pray for you as president, as pastor of the Zion Praise Baptist Church of Bensonville. But I'll sign the death warrant. He prayed and right after that, he signed the death warrant. Because he considered the interest of the Liberian people higher than family interest. He considered the Constitution to be above everyone. By that, he was teaching all Liberian citizens that nobody is above the law, that even a turbo could not be above the law at that time, and that nobody you know, was above the law. By his action, he didn't need to say any more. So I admire that in, the, in, in President Tubbo, and that's the kind of president I want to be, to execute the law, to make sure that everybody is under the law. And everybody knows my reputation. Trust me. When I become president, everybody will put himself in order because they already knew from my track record. Let me, let me say this. Liberia is a naturally rich country. We are not poor. We are poor by choice. We are poor because on election day, we choose lawmakers and president, lawmakers who put them in, in the legislature and we put people in the, in the executive mansion as president who have two uh, problems. One, they don't know the jobs that they are elected for but they are, they are elected because they bring us bags of rice, they bring us money, they bring us liquor, they, and for one day happiness, and then six years we suffer. And two, they don't love the people of Liberia. Those are two things that I'm not lacking of. I love the people of Liberia, and I know the job. Because like I say, I'm one presidential candidate in a long time in Liberia who is I done apprenticeship job in the office of the president will be president, so I already know it. And two, I love the Liberian people. That's why I would never steal from them. Now, let me tell you, Liberia is so rich. Our soil is rich. For agriculture alone, we could make millions of dollars. Like I, I told you, we could be a rice exporter and make you know five, six hundred million dollars. But more than that, God gave us that rich soil where you know, it's so rich that food grows everywhere. Things go everywhere, even on the beaches. You see a, a plum growing there when you drop the seed, right in the sand. There's a country you see an unfinished house with grass growing on it. So then under the soil, we have 
Rogers, iron ore there, gold there, diamond there, other minerals there. Let me tell you an example of a country that just got one of our the minerals that we have and is doing much better than Liberia. The country is called Botswana. It is a landlocked country. No sea coast. They have to go to another country for them to get goods to come to the country. Then 70% of the land has so sand, desert. Only 30% of the land they have to grow food. And they can grow more of their food much better than us. So only 30% of the land they have, they say, okay, we raise animals. They are raising goats, sheep, and cows. And they are exporting meat in the southern part of Africa. They exporting meat to South Africa and other countries. From just the 30% of land that they have, then they have only diamond in their country. From the diamond, they have built some of the best roads you can find in Africa here. Botswana, is, when you go to Gaborini, is like Europe. The, the education is on top, education system on top, health system on top. Everything is so well happening in our country. They even send their children abroad, give them scholarship, give them big stipend. I was saying, I was speaking about Botswana on OK Radio one time, and, and Julia Jett told me, oh, but I was, he, he was on scholarship, British scholarship in the UK, and the students from Botswana were, were getting more stipend than what the British government were giving his scholarship students. So Botswana has only diamond. Botswana has 30% of land for agriculture activity. How come Botswana is doing better than Liberia and not crediting money from uh, uh, the international institutions? Look, there is money here. I will govern this country in such a way that we'll have so many millionaires and even billionaires outside government than inside government. Not today where the millionaires are inside government because they are still in, I will, I will create an environment for Liberians to have capacity. Me, as president, most of my contracts will go to Liberians. We'll buy goods and services mostly from the Liberians. More than 75% of what we we'll buy will come from Liberians. And I'm not saying foreign businesses will not be able to support them, but Liberians will be, will be proud because of the preferential treatment we receive from our government, we'll be proud to be Liberians. And they are the ones that will be getting the BB contract. Today, even construction contract with Liberian contracting uh, construction companies, the, the non-Liberians get the BB construction companies uh, contracts, and the Liberian company can get subcontracts. It should be the other way around. Liberian construction companies should be getting the contracts and, and subcontracting part of it to non liberian Today, non liberian business both feel better in Liberia. They feel stronger than, than Liberian business But We have to turn it around. Liberia has to be for Liberians just as America is for Americans, just as Nigeria is for Nigerians, just as Ghana, Africa, and all the countries are treating their own citizens preferentially. That is the thing that can make you to respect your government and love your country. I want to bring that back. I strongly believe, yes, we we'll get grants, we we'll, we'll look for aid from the other, from the learning institution, but I can tell you, the plan I have, it will be for a short time. We'll make Liberia a self-reliant country. And I have an example, I made the Bar Association a self-reliant organization by using the law.
Well, you know, I mean, every concession has a review period. Um, I was in President Salib's government from the beginning. The metal steel uh, contract, for example, was subjected to review and was modified. <coughs> Excuse me. So when I became president, we, I was set up a, a, a special committee to examine all of the contracts to see how some of them can be modified for the benefits of the Liberian people. Thank you so much. I didn't get a question though. Yeah, he, 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 he me put me a giving me a blog of the your your the discussion at the second place it was like a tutorial for them. Many persons are coming asking them to vote for them, but they are not really giving the kind of education that you gave today regarding what the people need to know about their own right. Authority that you 
into the legislature. This is my first time trying to get elected into a national position. Yeah. The only national level election I participated in is the Bar Association of Lawyers. Mm -hmm. And I was elected landslide. My opponent got 61 votes and I got 221 votes. And I set clear standards in a, in a bar. All the lawyers, there's not one lawyer who uh, can say anything negative about my tenure. It is under my administration that you don't have quack lawyers anymore. Every lawyer in Liberia now has a license to show. I introduced that. Okay, let's take this call so, out. Uh, it's not let's me. Let's take this call out, Councillor. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, Councillor, go ahead. That's different. Uh, so, you know, I, I think we're talking about different person, but I've never been elected to turn my back on people. And uh, I think we're talking about a different person. Okay. 2-4-7-4-6-3-8-1-7. 2-4-7-4-6-3-8-1-7. 2-4-8-12-29-38. 2-4-7-4-6-3-8-1-7. 2-4-8-12-29-38. We have all this evening, of the Liberals People Party is here, uh, encouraging all of us Cape Martinians uh, to make sure that we have our voter cards come uh, March 22, uh, April 9, 
and he's tell you the style of government, his style of government uh, when he's elected. So uh, we were talking about this industrial stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I want to I want to speak a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. In my in my ten point agenda for better Liberia, I have this uh, plan that I will give incentive to any. Uh, value addition company. Value addition company means a company that want to have a factory to transform some of our local uh, raw materials into finished products, like to make furniture. Like, in fact, I will issue an order in the uh, executive order in the first hundred days that no laws will be exported from Liberia. We will only permit people to engage in the forest industry by opening sawmills here and opening furniture factories and so if you want to open your furniture factory for example i say anybody that any company that want to open a factory 50 miles away from Monroe will get tax incentive from government there will be tax reduction for every 50 miles to the extent that if you got your your your, your factory in kipamos or in greenville or Barkleyville, you will be very paying very low corporate tax but the benefit is that there will be employment of young people in those counties and when the young people are employed in those counties, here government, uh, uh, they will earn money, but government will also get money. While the company will not be paying huge taxes to government, the employees will be paying income tax to government. When they pay income tax to government, not only that, these same employees will, will be renting houses from real estate owners in those counties. And the income that the real estate owners get, they will also pay taxes on it real estate taxes and, 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 and realty lease tax, all the taxes will come. There will be endless multiply effect. The same employees will get out and go to drugs to the bar. They will be purchasing in those counties and the poor will be purchasing will be getting income and will be paying income taxes on them. So people, even though the companies will not be paying high property, I mean, uh, 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 corporate taxes, but their investment will will make the local people to get money and will also make government to get money because government tax base will be expanded based upon these investments. So I will encourage the establishment of factories all over. Some of them may be factory producing a, a rubber gloves, sanitary gloves, that lack of sanitary gloves that made a lot of our nurses and doctors that died during the Ebola time. How can we be producing natural rubber in this country and the products that are made from natural rubber are not available and because of that, our nurses and doctors that so when i become president i will encourage people who can produce those kind of materials to open factories in liberia so that liberia can be an exporter of sanitary gloves condoms and so all of those the materials the final quarter, then we just give you the edge to for party good evening uh, yeah your name where you come from are you sure you go ahead? Uh, first, I want to say a big thing to you and your, your guests for uh, this providing of quality and better education for all the evenings. You know, I've been hearing the news after a few months ago, and the poor is not very calm, they feel very well. And I uh, have well, a lot of information relating to this.
I didn't bring bags of money for them. I didn't bring uh, bags of rice for them. I didn't bring liquor for those who can drink. I brought a message of hope, message of transformation of Liberia. And I strongly believe that they need to talk to people. People who know my track record know that I'm capable of delivering on these promises. I strongly believe that Liberia can be much, much better than it is today. Look, the naked sea coast we have. When our Solicitor General used to be in a helicopter from Cape Mount to Cape Palmas, sandy beaches, we are better than Banjo that is making all that money from, from, from uh, tourism. If only we have good leadership here, we, might, we could become the best uh, country for tourism because our forest, we still have for the three percent of the remaining tropical forest in West Africa. We have more forest than Nigeria, Ghana, Ivory Coast, and even Sierra Leone combined, right here in Liberia. And some people might just come as tourists to go and look at the trees, the mahogany, all the, the exotic species that don't exist anywhere in the world today. And when they come as tourists, our hotels will make money. And the hotels will employ more young librarians to work in those hotels. And oh, those young librarians will bring any money and helping their family. So tourism alone, I'm just talking about how much you could benefit from the sea coast. But more than that, the marine life that we have. We have fish in Liberia that you can't find in other countries. And, and, and fishing alone could bring millions, if not billions of dollars to Liberia. Then we have all these lakes along the, the sea coast. Small, small lakes from, 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 from Cape Mount to Cape Palmas. Cape Mount starts with Lepiso and ends with Le Shepherd in Cape Palmas. All these areas are places that people would like to go. And even the big, big uh, man-made lakes that were left in, in Bomi Hill, uh, bomb mines, and other areas are places that people will want to go and do study on. Tourists will go and see. You got to look for beautiful hills all over, better than the the hills 
in 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 Western Cape that are called the, the Table Mountains. Places that you 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 know beautiful places. There's the prayer mountain between uh, Palala and Zebe in Bonkane that people go to pray. Tourists could come and go there. So Liberia is just a rich country. I'm not even talking about the soil and the mineral resources on it. All we need in Liberia will be better than Botswana, will be better than UAE, will be even better than the United States, given our population and the resources we have here is good governance, good leadership. And that is what I'm promising the Liberian poor. And I strongly believe. And I'll be governing my first term as in the second term to do things right. It is this a, a, a quest for second term that can make president to make so much compromises in the first term and they don't govern well. But I will do it differently. And I strongly believe that I will set the tone for good governance in Liberia just as Sarisi Kama said a very good tune for governance in Botswana in 1966. And since that time, he there a long time, but all the presidents have been coming are honest, they have integrity, they love the country, and they don't steal from the country because their first president sent the tune. I want to be the president to set that tune for better Liberia for now and in the future. Thank you very much for all the Kimantinians that listen to me tonight. There are places that I will not reach because my security, my deputy security man passed yesterday and I have to cut short my visit and go by. So I'm not going to reach King Jaw and other places, Damala and places that I wanted to go, even rubber spot. But I promise I will come back and I'll reach those places. But for the places I'm not reaching, I'm sure that Radio Cape Man has made me to reach those places tonight. Therefore, I want to thank you, Roger, for allowing me to speak on your radio tonight. Thank you very much. Okay, baraka, baraka to you and baraka to all the people in Cape Man.